I didn't either. Good morning. <laughs> Try this again. Retake. Um, this morning is a little bit different um, than what our normal service is going to be like. So if you're a visitor of ours today, we welcome you. Um, and just I'm giving you a disclaimer up front. It's a little different. But we're extremely proud of, uh, to have our youth do the service today. Uh, it's a total youth service. So uh, just you know, give them the support that they need, which I, I know you will. Um, this weekend we had what we call our D-Now weekend here, here at the church. Uh, discipleship now and it's essentially we started Friday after school and went through Friday night they went home to host homes Friday evening um, and then all day yesterday here at the church and we broke last night around nine o'clock or so so if you're if your teen is tired uh, today this afternoon cut them some slack um, there's a reason why they're tired um, but we had an excellent weekend um, had good we had lots of laughs we laughed at ourselves um, <clears throat> just a good weekend. <clears throat> See what you guys do. <laughs> I do need to say thanks to though to um, just a few people. The um, I had lots of help from lots of folks. So thank you to the host families, the hosted people. Uh, without you, we could not have done it. Thank you for all the kitchen help. Um, you guys served some excellent meals. Um, just ask the kids. I'm sorry, you don't like to call kids. Ask the teens that. Um, and, and I also want to say thanks to, um, we had some special, I'll call them special, special musicians come in from out of town. You all know Grayson. He came and played. Um, and then Daniel Jones came down from, well, they both came from Lynchburg, from Liberty University. But Daniel Jones came down, and so did Grayson come down. So they played, and they'll play today in the praise band, so you'll get to hear them. You'll get a taste of what the, what the youth heard all weekend. And also, I'll take this opportunity just to say thanks to, to Pastor Matt for coming down from Maryland and his wife Amber and Alex and Ben um, as well. <clears throat> they came down from Maryland. See what you guys do? <clears throat> but um, Matt is a pastor at a church in, in Maryland, and uh, he came down and spoke to the teens this weekend. So that was good. Um, so teens, you're up. Um, Come on. <laughs> and if you want to see some of the slides, you actually you need to see some of the, see those slides again, um, baby pictures and stuff. And you need to see Mr. Stone in action. Um, he was challenged and he met the challenge. Okay. Into the darkness you shine Out of 
Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming to First Baptist Weddington. Uh, there's a bunch of new people here today. Um, there's a little form in the seat back in front of you if you want to fill that out and uh, put it in the offering plate as it comes around. Thank you. Let's pray together. God, you're so good, and we're so grateful that we get to be together to worship you this morning. Um, we thank you that you've made a way for us to have a relationship with you. And we live our lives now, God, in this grace, this wonderful grace that you've given us. Please help everything we do today to be honoring to you. Help us to focus on you and to not be distracted. Thank you. In your name we pray, amen. Amen.
Well, good morning. It's nice to see everybody. So, the first song we're doing is called Build Your Kingdom. And if I'm not mistaken, the words will be up on the screen. So, this song, when me and Daniel were picking the songs to do this weekend, we chose it because it really says a lot of what we hope we'll get out of this weekend. We're hoping that God will build his kingdom here in our hearts and that we'll go forth and shine his light to the rest of the world. We'll wait a few more seconds for Matt. Would you please stand, actually? Sorry. Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fear, show your mighty hand, heal our streets and lands, set your church on fire, win this nation back, change the atmosphere, build your kingdom. Church on fire with this nation. 
greeting and welcome, so you guys can move around and shake hands, and the guests, we ask that you'll stay right where you are, and we will come and greet you personally. You guys are so friendly. <laughs> check, check, check. Check one, check. Our focus for the D Now weekend is <coughs> Jesus. In order to do that, we need to look to him as our example. And Pastor Matt focused on three different passages. Um, but as far as looking to him, we need to have him as our vision. So would you please join us in singing the chorus, You Are My Vision. Please stand and join us. You are my vision, O King of my heart. Nothing else satisfies only you, Lord. You are my best thought by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, your presence. 
bow with me. Heavenly Father, as we enter this time of thanksgiving, uh, I pray that we would remember everything that you've done for us, and we'd be thankful always. Every breath that you give us is precious, and you've given us all we could ever need. Food to eat, place to stay, clothes to wear, people who love us, and most importantly, you gave us your son to die for our sins. We know we can never repay you fully for that, but we pray that you may bless these tithes and offerings so that we may further your kingdom and bring glory to your name in everything we do. In your name we pray. Amen. How's everybody doing this morning? It's good. Are y'all proud as I am to see these youth up here? Yes. Well, today's passage of scripture is going to come out of Acts chapter 7. It's going to be Stephen's speech to the high council starting in Verse 54, we'll be going through 
verse 60. So starting there in 54. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Jealous for me, loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. Oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us so. We are his portion and he is our prize Drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes And if grace is an ocean we're all sinking So heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss My heart turns violently inside my chest I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. Oh,
Well, good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to be with you this weekend. I'm Matt Eichhorn. I'm Randy's youngest brother. We have an older brother, Tim. Uh, if you look at Randy and I, we look a little bit alike. We are better looking and smarter than our older brother. Since he's in Tennessee, we'll just, we can say that and get away with it because he's much bigger than us, and uh, he could pound us if he wanted to. We've had a great weekend. We really have. Uh, D now has been fun. I have enjoyed the opportunity. My family has enjoyed being here in uh, Weddington, Waxhaw, North Carolina. Uh, we are from Maryland, and uh, we'll be traveling back home uh, later this afternoon uh, back to Western Maryland. Temperature is dropping very quickly in Western Maryland, and uh, I have the fireplace. We have a wood stove. It's ready to go. All I've got to do is put a match in it, get it going, and be warm for the rest of the night. But uh, we have really enjoyed our time together, and we focused on, in the back of the shirts of these uh, young people, it says, Live Like Jesus. That's been our focus this, uh, this weekend, Friday night and Saturday, all day yesterday, and uh, this morning, we're going to kind of continue that theme in a little bit of a different approach, but continue to live like Jesus, and that's the challenge I want to put before you this morning. Let's begin with a word of prayer and just ask God to really bless our time uh, in His Word this morning. Father, we ask and pray, that as we now give attention to the Word of God, that you would use this occasion to minister to our hearts, whether we're young people, whether we're middle-aged, adults, regardless of where we are in life, we realize, Lord, that as a result of what you have done for us on the cross. Uh, it is our responsibility to be yielded to you and to live like Jesus. And as we look at the example of Stephen this morning, uh, we just trust and pray that you'll challenge us uh, with the word of God and with his testimony so that we might leave here more committed uh, to living like Jesus. And this I do pray, and I do trust you will work. In Jesus' name, amen. Take your Bibles, if you would, please, and turn to the book of Acts. Uh, Matthew read for us today out of Acts chapter, I believe, 7 there. And uh, we're going to read from, uh, look at chapter 6, and uh, look at a couple verses here, and look at the life of Stephen. And while you're turning there, I want to say thank you to Pastor Sam Roach for allowing me to share the pulpit today. And so enjoy your day off for the morning. And uh, that's, that's always a good thing when somebody comes in and you just kind of sit there and it's like, hey, this is good. This is good. So thank you for for sharing your pulpit uh, with me this morning. In Acts chapter 6, uh, we're going to learn here from the life of Stephen, one of those early disciples of the early church, uh, what it means to be committed and to live like Jesus. That's what we want to focus on this morning. If we want to live like Jesus, we need to be committed like Jesus. Now, in our time for D now, Friday and Saturday, we looked at the life of Jesus uh, we looked at how he was a great example of, of what it means to serve in John chapter 13 when he was in that upper room with his disciples and he was serving uh, by, by washing the feet of his disciples. Uh, we looked at, then on uh, Saturday morning at, at how we need to be obedient like Jesus and obey like Jesus and how Jesus, when he went into the Garden of Gethsemane and he said, Father, not my will, but your, be, your will be done and how he was obedient to the will of the Father. And we wrapped up things last night by looking at the example of Jesus and how uh, there he was willing to forgive. Even on the cross of Calvary, when Jesus cried out and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What a, what a testimony of, for, and a challenge for us to follow that example. So we come now to just days and, uh, after the life of Christ. And here the early church has started in Acts chapter 2. And we see the importance of what it looks like and, and what it means to, to live and to be committed like Jesus. Commitment is something that we struggle with. I would venture to say that all of us struggle with that. I read just this week an article where a CEO of a ma manufacturing corporation was explaining his new policy uh, to his employees. And he said, we're going to become more, uh, more and more automated now, now, I know many of you are, are getting a little excited and a little concerned that our new robots will be taking your jobs, but let me assure you that, that we're going to take steps to guarantee that all of you will remain on the payroll. And according to the plan we are developing, you're going to receive a full week's pay. But here's the kicker. You only have to come in one day a week. You only have to come in on Wednesday and just work on Wednesday, but it's the same pay. And when you know it, somebody in the back raises his hand and says, do we have to come every Wednesday? <laughs> I mean, go figure. That's kind of like the level of commitment uh, in the world, but sometimes that level of commitment's like that in the church as well. 
the former chairman of ITT, Harold Janine, says, It is an immutable law in business that words are words, explanations are explanations, promises are promises, but only performance is reality. Very true. When you think of Captain Cook, some 200 years ago, as he set off to, to, to sail, he named his, his ships Resolution, Endeavor, Discovery. And yet so often in the church, sadly, our commitment is somewhat like the kamikaze pilot who flew 188 missions. <laughs> Did you catch up to that one? <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> Yeah, why is that? We, we want to be committed. We want to live like Jesus, and we want to be committed like Jesus. So we come to Acts chapter 6, and we look at the life of, of Stephen. I want to share with you this morning three areas of commitment from his life. And I want to begin in chapter 6 and begin reading in verse 1. And if you'll follow along, we're going to read the first several verses here, and then we'll take some time and, and really dig into this passage, beginning in verse 1 of chapter 6. Now, in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews, because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the, whole, of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And when they said, and what they said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenes, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase. And the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Verse 9, then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and the Cyrenians, and of the Alexandrians, and of those of Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. The first area of commitment I want to address this morning is a commitment to service. A commitment to service. Now we know from the book of Acts, it's, the church starts in chapter 2. We know in chapter 3, Peter and John are going into the temple, and there's a lame man there. They heal him, and he is healed, and things begin to stir very quickly. In chapter 4, uh, Peter gives a great message. In chapter 5, there's that division with Ananias and Sapphira. So here in chapter 6, things are beginning to explode by way of the early church. And as a result, there's a lot of people that have needs. And the, and the early apostles say, hey, we can't be doing all these things at one time. We got to find some help. So they pray about, and God brings for them uh, these men, Stephen being one of those. And it says about Stephen's testimony in verse 3, we see it in verse 5, we see it in verses 8 and 9, that Stephen was of good repute, he was full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, and he was a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. He wasn't just a warm body. He was a man who set himself apart, not because he was tooting his own horn, but because God was working in his life and through his life. And the other people recognized and acknowledged that this Stephen, he is a man after God's heart. He is something special. God is working in him and through him. So we see this first area of service, of commitment, it is a commitment to service. Now, I believe there's a connection here. When God is working in our hearts and through our lives, and we are growing in our walk, in our relationship, in our fellowship with Him, then God is going to make us and allow us to be available for His service and for His honor and for His glory. There's a connection there. I walk in fellowship with Christ, and He uses me in service to Him. 
So when it comes to living like Jesus and using the example of Stephen, one of the things we could say here is he is a man who was committed to serving the Lord. And it started before that because his walk with the Lord was what it should have been. And as a result of his walk and his fellowship being where it needed to be, God was going to use him in ministry and in service. That leads me to a question for each of us this morning. The first question is this. Am I in sweet fellowship with the Lord that he has me at a place in my life where where he's using me in service to him. In other words, am, am, am I walking in fellowship with the Lord? Is my heart pure before the Lord? Am, am I in sweet fellowship? I'm having that quiet time with him. I, I'm being obedient to the, to the working of the Spirit of God in my life. I, I, I'm being surrendered to the, to the will of the Father in my life. If that's where I'm at, then I can assure you that God wants to use you in his ministry and in his service. The flip side of that same coin, of that question, would be this. Is the reason I'm not serving because I'm not in fellowship with the Lord? In other words, if the reason I'm not actively serving is because... I'm not where I'm supposed to be, spiritually speaking. That's a rather pointed, straight-to-the-heart question. Because regardless of what our spouse may think, and regardless of what our kids may think, and regardless of what the church folks might think, the bottom line is, I only know my heart before the Lord. And you only know your heart before the Lord. So if we want to live like Jesus and follow the example of Stephen, certainly we need to have a commitment to service, and that service comes from being in fellowship with the Lord, of good repute. That's the word where we get our English word martyr, witness, sold out to Jesus. The scriptures say he was full, uh, filled up uh, with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. He was a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. He had a conviction that God's word is truth, and the truth is what's going to allow me to live my life in a way that pleases and honors him. And as a result of that, he's going to put me in service for him. The first area of commitment is a commitment to service. Brings me to the second area. If you'll follow with me in chapter 6 and verse 11, verse 10. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking. When they secretly instigated men who said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes. And they came upon him and seized him and brought him before the council. And they set up false witnesses who said, This man never ceases to speak words against his, this holy place and the law. For we have heard him lie. We have heard him say <coughs> that this, is, this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place And will change the the customs that Moses delivered to us. And gazing at him, all who sat in the council saw that his face was like the face of an angel. I invite you to the second point here. A commitment to service. But secondly, a commitment to boldness. You see what's happening here from verse 10 down to the end of the chapter. They can't get to this Stephen guy because he's the real deal. So they concoct this plan to say... You know what? We need, to, we need to have some false witnesses come along and say, this Stephen guy is doing this and he's doing this and he's doing this. Everything against our traditions as good Jews. And, and so we, wanna, we want some evidence. We, even if we have to make up the evidence, we want some evidence to bring charges against this man. So they attempt to do that. 
But then in chapter 7, and I will not take the time to read the entire chapter, nor will I take the time to read it's, it's, it's this portion. But what we see in chapter 7 is Stephen stands up and he speaks with boldness and puts in place those folks who are bringing these false charges against him. It is a commitment to boldness. Uh, they have created this false scene. And Stephen speaks up and he speaks with boldness and he addresses every issue that they have charged, falsely charged him with. He spoke the truth of God's word with boldness. And if you were just to scan through chapter 7, you will notice that he addresses Abraham, Father Abraham. He addresses Joseph in verses 9 through 19. He addresses Moses and Aaron. He addresses Solomon and the temple. And then he concludes the chapter, and I would like you to go to the end of chapter 7, and he concludes the chapter with a strong rebuke. He says in chapter 7, beginning in verse 51, he says, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, referring to Christ, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. You're nothing but a bunch of self-righteous ignoramuses when it comes to understanding the truth of who Jesus Christ is and who I am representing to you today. He was a man of boldness. He didn't, he didn't tuck tail and run. He didn't cover it up. He didn't sugarcoat it. He spoke the truth with boldness. Have you noticed in our world today that the world attacks the messenger because it cannot destroy the message itself. So who do they come after? They come after Christians. They come after church-going people who are radical in their thinking. I mean, how, how, how uh, uh, selective are you in your thinking to, to, to not be all-inclusive? Why would you follow after this radical Jesus guy? Why would you stand for him? Why would you risk everything for him? Because the world cannot destroy the message. So it goes after the messenger. The same is true for Jesus. Jesus told his disciples time and time again, you stand for me and they're going to come after you. Out on you because... They've already got me. And the same is true today. We stand for truth and we are attacked relentlessly because we stand for what is biblically and morally true and we are attacked for it. And oh, how we need Christians in North Carolina, in Weddington, and believe me, we need a whole lot of them in Maryland. <laughs> to stand for biblical truth and to stand uncompromising and say, you know what, in boldness, I'm going to stand for what the scriptures teach and preach. I'm going to stand regardless of how many attacks I get, how much character assassination they, they put towards me. I am going to stand and I'm going to be bold in my witness and in my testimony for Christ. Are we committed to speaking and defending the truth of God's word with boldness? Will we stand in the midst of turmoil for the principles of God's word? Or will we compromise, tuck tail and run? Compromise our convictions that are based on scripture because it's getting a little too hot in the kitchen and we jump ship. Oh God, give us the, the boldness to stand for Christ in a world that is so opposed to biblical and moral truth. Brings me to the third area of commitment we see in the life of Stephen. We see the commitment of service. We see a commitment to boldness. And finally, at the end of verses 54 through 60, the passage I just read for you, we see a commitment to sacrifice. 
As Stephen concluded his message, the high priest and his council, they were furious. The scriptures say they were enraged in verse 54. They were cut to the heart. Isn't that amazing? Truth always has a way of just kind of cutting right to the heart. (laughs) And so when Stephen spoke truth, it just enraged these people even more. We see in verse 57 that the situation here escalates and it turns ugly very fast. Notice with me, go back to verse 57. But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. We got to do something about this. So as Stephen tells of the vision of the glorified Christ to the Sanhedrin here, they rushed together at him. That's a very interesting Greek word that's used in that phrase there. It's the same word that when Jesus cast out those demons uh, from those demonic persons and cast them into the swine. And remember the swine then took off, ran down the hill, went into the water. That's the same word that's used in that passage that's used here. These people were Satan energized and they had a mission to destroy the messenger of this message of Christ. And that's who they were after. And it escalates quickly. Verse 58, we see here that then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul, who we know from chapter 9, Saul is converted, and we know him as the Apostle Paul. And as they were stoning Stephen, verse 59, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Jesus was willing, or excuse me, Stephen was willing to sacrifice it all for Christ. There was no hesitancy, there was no wavering, there was no, mm, I really think about this for a little bit, none of that. It's very clear that Stephen said, hey, I'm standing committed to Christ. If it means my life for Christ, then so be it. And sure enough, he is martyred for the cause of Christ. It was said of Abraham Lincoln after his assassination that a tree is best measured when it is down. That resonates. Not until he was assassinated, do we, and not until now do we look back and understand the magnitude of the impact that he had as the 16th president of the United States. The same is true for, for Stephen. It doesn't take long after chapter 7 that the persecution of the early church intensifies to a point where the Christians are being killed relentlessly. The same is true today to some degree. We only get one chance at life. And we only get one opportunity to make a difference for the Lord Jesus Christ. So at the end of the day, does our conscience conscience allow us to put our head on our pillow at night and say, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be committed to you And to stand with boldness. And to stand as a sacrifice for the cause of Jesus Christ. Christ demands those of us who follow after him to be willing to sacrifice. Whether that's at home. Whether that's in relationships. Whether that's at work whether that's just as a part of our general testimony, as the Apostle Paul said, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. May I live my life today committed to the cause of Christ so that when life is over, it can be said of me, he lived like Jesus. The hymn writer 
put it this way. Only one life to offer. Take it, dear Lord, I pray. Nothing from thee withholding. Thy will I now obey. Thou hast freely given thine all in all for me. Claim this life for thine own to be used, my Savior, every moment for thee. Let's leave this place this morning committed so that we can say by way of our testimony that to live like Jesus is to be committed like Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity and the privilege this morning to share the word of God with these folks. Thank you, Father, for the the warm hospitality and the time together with these young people this weekend. But most importantly, Father, I thank you for the common bond that we have in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. To come from eight hours away and to be able to join this church family this morning and to be able to open the word of God and, and to realize and to recognize that there are certainly common things that we have all because of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So I thank you, Father, for the opportunity and the privilege. And this morning as we wrap up our time and our service today, I I do challenge each of these folks, myself included, that if I want to live like Jesus, can I truly say in my heart of hearts that I'm committed like Jesus? The life of Stephen is a, is a wonderful testimony of what it means to be committed to service, to be committed to boldness, and to be committed to sacrifice, laying it all on the line for the cause of Christ. Father, stir our hearts during these closing moments we have together. And all praise and all gl- honor and glory to the name of the risen Savior, in whose name I do pray, Jesus, amen. says that takes taking up your cross and following him. If some of you are ready to make that decision for the first time, Pastor Sam is in the front. If you've already made that decision but feel that you need to recommit yourself, don't feel shy. Come up and if you want to take the step to join this church, Shoulders, my soul now to stand.
Your love goes on. Ever our hearts will seek Jesus in everything. From the sky to the ocean, see your love goes on. Through every rise and fall, we are forever yours. One thing we know is sure, your love goes on and on and on. 